This is 3 News Daily. Hello everyone and welcome back to 3 News Daily on this Tuesday, February 21st. I'm Stephanie Haney here with your top stories. And we regret to have to tell you today that one person is dead and at least 13 others are injured after the I. Schumann and Company metal plant exploded in Oakwood Village yesterday afternoon. Our Lydia Sparrow was on the scene for hours yesterday and spoke with one employee who was still shaken up from the blast. From miles away, you can see the black smoke. And as she got closer, the flames. It was catastrophic what happened inside I. Schumann and Company. The sound so loud, many thought it was a bomb. Donald Price was inside. He was still in shock, covered in soot and dust. Everything was going like the usual day. Everything was going fine. Next thing I know, boom, everything turned black. All that is the big explosion. It was so black, you couldn't even see. So I finally made my way to get outside. Outside, others who work in the industrial park witnessed something they had never seen before. I heard uh, a bunch of debris hitting the top of our building and landing in the parking lot. Actually, these are a few pieces that I had found in our parking lot. The debris field so large, it was like shrapnel flying through the air. I. Schumann and company made copper alloys. The explosion happened in the middle of the plant. So powerful, it created a crater. When rescue crews arrived on the scene, it was chaotic. It seemed like a lot of burn victims, a lot of burn uh, injuries. The people were mostly walking wounded. And as bad as it seemed outside, it was worse for the employees inside who watched the building explode and crumble before them. Price was walking to his daughter's car when we met up with him. It was like in shock. I was like in shock. And we do have confirmation that the name of the person who died in that explosion is Steve Mullins. Now, I. Schumann released a statement following the explosion saying that they are putting the health and safety of their employees first and working with investigators to figure out how this happened in the first place. But this is not the first time there has been an explosion at the plant. In April of 2006, five workers were injured when molten metal caught on fire. Now, none of those injuries, however, were serious. Coming up this afternoon, Oakwood Village Police and Fire did hold a press conference to share more information about yesterday's explosion. We'll have that information on WKYC.com. And an investigation is underway after bullets hit a Cleveland EMS ambulance last night while it was transporting a patient. Cleveland police say it happened on East 135th Street, not far from the Tri-C Metropolitan Campus. Luckily, no bullets hit the crew or the patient inside. There's no word yet on any suspects in this incident, and as soon as we hear more information, we'll update you on WKYC.com. Now in Lakewood, police have recovered another body from Lake Erie. Officials say a resident who lives on Erie Cliff Drive went to look at their backyard shed, which had previously been broken into, and that's when they saw the body floating in the water. The victim there has been identified as 24-year-old Colin Brady. This is the fourth time over the past week that someone has been found dead in Lake Erie. It's unclear at this point if there's a connection between the bodies being found. Again, we'll keep you updated as we gather more information. And in East Palestine today, health clinics are now open to examine concerned residents, and some of them are complaining of sore throats, eyes, and strange rashes, which they say are all a result of the toxic chemical released after the train derailment on February 3rd. Also today, Governor Mike DeWine, EPA Administrator Mike Regan, and other officials returned to the town to tour more impacted homes. And while they're trying to show confidence in the safety of the drinking water and the tests being done in the area, you see here both DeWine and Regan drinking glasses of tap water from one of those homes. Now this afternoon, the governor wrapped up a press conference on what's next for East Palestine. Take a look at what they said there. My Department of Environmental Protection made a criminal referral to the Attorney General's office. My Office of General Counsel is looking at other legal steps that we might take. Um, so we're going to make sure that there is accountability, as I've said multiple times, accountability um, to make sure that the resources are spent by Norfolk Southern to cover testing, remediation, et cetera. And if other legal steps are necessary, we won't hesitate to take them in Pennsylvania. Yeah, let me, let me say for Ohio, uh, Ohio Attorney General, uh, will take whatever action that Ohio law uh, allows him to take. And I know he's reviewing this right now. 
Thank you all. And that was the governor of Pennsylvania and also our governor, Mike DeWine, again, talking about potential legal action, if necessary, against Norfolk Southern. That's the railway that operates those rail cars. And this Friday, it'll be three weeks since the train derailed, causing chaos for everyone in the area. Tonight, we'll have team coverage on the latest details from that full press conference and what the residents in East Palestine think about the new health clinics. That'll be coming up for you in our shows this afternoon. And we've also got the full press conference on WKYC.com. Now, early this morning, we spoke with Secretary of Transportation Pete Buttigieg on what the government is doing to make sure that railroads are held accountable for disasters very similar to what happened in East Palestine. And he says now is the time to act. That's right. There are a lot of common sense safety steps that the rail industry has fought tooth and nail, both when it comes to regulation from my department uh, and when it comes to their own conduct. Now is the time to change the direction of the rail industry when it comes to their willingness to support instead of fight a higher bar on accountability and safety. We are here to hold railroad companies accountable both for this incident and for the future, making sure that the future is safer than the past. Now, Buttigieg says that the freight rail industry should speed up the process to bring in safer tank cars and require at least two crew members on board all trains. The Department of Transportation is also starting a focused safety inspection program on travel routes for trains carrying toxic chemicals. And we've got more from that interview on WKYC.com. Zooming out now to Turkey, where another earthquake hit the Turkey and Syrian border just two weeks after a deadly 7.8 magnitude earthquake killed 40,000 people. Yesterday's quake registered at a 6.3 magnitude. Syrian civil defense says yesterday's earthquake also injured a large number of people, whether that was from falling debris, stampedes, or falls from buildings. We don't yet have numbers on those injuries. Now, in Poland today, President Joe Biden met with President Andrzej Duda today at the presidential palace in Warsaw and talked about historic ties between the U.S. and Poland. President Biden reaffirmed the United States' dedication to European security and emphasized the importance of the NATO alliance, while President Duda praised Biden's surprise visit to Ukraine yesterday. And while he was in Poland today, President Biden gave remarks ahead of Friday's one-year mark of the Russian invasion of Ukraine and how Ukraine is still standing today. One year ago, the world was bracing for the fall of Kyiv. Well, I've just come from a visit to Kyiv, and I can report Kyiv stands strong. <laughs> Kyiv stands proud. It stands tall. And most important, it stands free. Now, Biden also reflected on how nearly one year later, the democracy of the world in collaboration with NATO has grown stronger in solidarity with Ukraine. Now, today is Fat Tuesday, so a lot of Northeast Ohioans will be eating up. And around here, that means punch keys are on the menu. Rudy's Bakery in Parma is a go-to spot, and it's open right now with 35 different sweet and savory flavors of punch keys. And today is also extra special for Rudy's because they're celebrating 75 years of being in business. Congratulations to them. Now, the reason that people indulge on Fat Tuesday is because tomorrow is Ash Wednesday for the Catholic community, and that starts Lent. That's the 40 days leading up to Easter. And that brings us to our question of the day. If you practice Lent and you're preparing to head into a 40-day fast, we want to know, what do you plan on giving up for Lent this year? Post your comment to the WKYC Facebook page, and we'll talk about it during What's New at 4 o'clock. I always find it fascinating the things that people are willing to give up and also the things that people sort of value or see as an indulgence at this time of year. Very interested to see what those responses are. Thanks for being with us for today's edition of 3 News Daily. We'll catch you back here tomorrow with more of your top stories from around Northeast Ohio.